This gentleman is Alessandro the Sixth or Alexander the Sixth, if you prefer. And the reason he is wearing ladies' clothes is because he is the Pope, or he was the Pope. He was the Pope from the 11th of August. 1492 until his death aged 72 on the 18th of August 1503. His reign coincided with the first European arrivals in America and the competition between Portugal and what was to become Spain, or to be more precise, it was then Aragon and Castile, for control of those lands about to be occupied by the European powers. In order to share out the foreseen booty, the Treaty of Tordesillas was agreed upon on the 7th of June 1492, when this Pope established a demarcation line at a distance 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands, that is between 48 and 49 degrees west of Greenwich. All newly discovered lands to the east were to be Portuguese and to the west were to be given to the Spanish. Here we have a map dating to 1502 produced by the Italian legate to the King of Portugal showing the world that was then known to the Portuguese explorers. And for when it was completed, I think it is a very good job. Remember that it had only been 10 years since Columbus was the first European to see America. It is the papal ruling that is used by Argentina today to claim that as Spain was the benefactor of the Pope's good grace in handing out things that did not belong to him to be plundered by Spain and Portugal, that it has the right to the Falkland Islands. Of course, Argentina was not mentioned in the Treaty of Tordesillas and indeed did not exist until well over 300 years later. You may think that using this logic, of course, they could also claim a right to California or Alaska. Argentina also claims South Georgia. South Georgia is located at 36 degrees west, so therefore, according to the Treaty of Tordesillas, it should have gone to Portugal. The Falklands are a group of around 200 islands located some 500 kilometers to the east of the island of Tierra del Fuego at the southernmost tip of America. It is part of the continental shelf of South America. At this point, I'm going to look at the claims of who were the first Europeans to see the islands. One such claim is that it was Amerigo Vespucci. In a letter to Piero Soderini, written from Lisbon, dated the 4th of September 1504, the explorer wrote that on the 7th of April 1501 he saw land, but because the cold was so intense, a landing was not possible. However, the geographical determinations are so imprecise and its description so vague that it could have been just about anywhere. In an earlier letter, you wrote of finding islands at 50 degrees, which had, and now I quote, a very mild and pleasant climate, many species of ferocious animals, especially lions, snakes, and others, extensive forests and trees of immense size, the land is extremely fertile. I don't know what America saw, but that certainly isn't the Falkland Islands. Americo Vespucci was from Florence, and on that voyage he was hired by the King of Portugal, although he'd also earlier worked for the King of Spain as well. Here we have an early 16th century Ottoman map called the Pirires map, which does show some islands which appear roughly where the Falklands are, which could indicate their discovery. Piri Reis based his 1513 map on four Portuguese maps, eight maps of Ptolemy, 
one Arabic map and the charts of Columbus. Whereas the charts of Columbus and the Portuguese maps were then new, the others were not. Ptolemy, for example, had died 1,343 years earlier. However, I would say that whereas the Falklands are not in their true shape, the coastline of the southern portion of South America is recognisable, although, of course, it is rotated by around 90 degrees. In this world map by Diego Ribeiro from 1529, which is today in the Vatican, one can make out islands called Sanson, although admittedly they are not in the correct position. Here we have a 19th century copy of one of the maps of Diego Ribeiro. The maps were updated, or shall we say redrawn, in 1533, but without these islands. However, the islands were shown on later 16th and 17th century maps, one, of course, needs to remember that the map makers were including information from older maps, and if they had anything new to add, then it was probably from their own personal experience, and few of them had been in the Southern Atlantic. For example, Diego Ribeiro probably got his information from Esteban Gomez, who had split with Magellan on the 1st of November 1520 and returned to Spain. There are claims that other Europeans may have seen the island. For example, one such sailor is Simón de Alcazaba y Sotomayor, who left Spain with two ships on the 21st of September 1534. The ship San Pedro, commanded by Rodrigo Martínez, was separated from the Madre de Dios by a storm near the entrance to the Rio de la Plata, and they met again on the 17th of January 1535 at Cabo Virgenes, which is at the tip of continental South America. Some islands were mentioned, and there they found, and now once more I quote, a large number of beasts, although in truth from half upwards, they looked like lions because of the bellow they gave and their ferocity, and their fangs. Well, once more, such animals were seen, then this was not the Falkland Islands. An expedition commanded by Francisco de Ribera, which aimed to colonise the area of the Strait of Magellan, set sail from Seville in August 1539. In January 1540, the three ships that managed to arrive entered the strait where they were hit by a storm that sank the flagship and separated the remaining two ships in opposite directions. One of the ships, under the command of Francisco Alonso de Camargo, continued through the strait, then sailing through the Beagle Channel and arrived eventually at what is today Peru. The other ship, the Incognita, whose captain may have been Gonzalo de Alvarado, was thrown into the Atlantic and shortly after sighted two small islands that correspond in position and description to the Falkland Islands. The ship's log describes a grass of one or two meters in height that coincides to a certain degree with the Falkland tussock and indicates the abundance of a small canine that could be the Falklands Islands fox. This animal is the Falklands Islands fox, also known as the Guara, Falkland Islands wolf, Falkland Islands dog, or various other names. This picture was drawn by Charles Darwin and can be found in the zoology of the voyage of the HMS Beagle. This animal is now extinct. In 2009, it was learned through DNA studies that its closest living relative was this animal, the maned wolf, which is found largely in southern Brazil. This uh, is video which I shot at the zoological gardens in Gdansk in Poland. However, there was a similar canid which had been placed in the same genus living on the American continent which went extinct between 1,500 and 3,000 years ago. In 2021, a theory was put forward at the University of Maine that the Falkland Islands fox could have been brought to the islands in prehistoric times by the indigenous peoples of South America. As Charles Darwin noted, the animals were friendly and did not fear people, and this in turn led to sailors running away from them. Nonetheless, I don't see how one could confuse this animal with a lion, unless, of course, they had never seen a lion. If you looked up 
on the internet, the first map of the Falkland Islands, then you will probably find this one. It does look a bit like the Falkland Islands and the date usually given for it is 1520. This map is one of many found in manuscripts in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris and was the work of André Teve. André Teve was born in 1516 and the map was produced in 1586, not 1520. According to the book Malvinas Soberania Memoria y Justicia, 10 de junio de 1829 by Sergio Esteban Cavilla, Rolando Laguarda Trias claims that this map was copied by the French cartographer from a 1520 map by Andres de San Martin. So, where is the 1520 map by Andres de San Martin? Unfortunately, it looks as though the dog ate it because no one has seen it. Well, it could have been destroyed, of course, but it would have been destroyed anyway if the dog had eaten it. The book itself was published by the Ministry of Education of the province of Chubut in Argentina in 2012. So there's zero evidence that San Martin was the original cartographer. Indeed, the first reference to it that I am aware of comes from 1982. And what do you know about the Falklands in 1982? I wonder what the idea of producing this map was. Teve himself said that he based his maps on those of Portuguese sailors in Lisbon. For additional proof, here's André Teve's map of the Americas. Notice how accurate it is for 1586, and here is a close-up of where the Falkland Islands are. Now, of course, they might have moved in the interceding period, but uh, in this map, they're not there. Of course, I might be completely wrong, and the comment section is available to anyone who has evidence to the country. However, saying things like, it must have been San Martin who did it is not evidence. There does not appear to have been any human inhabitants living in the islands when they were first sighted by sailors of the English ship Desire in 1592 and reported by her captain John Davis as certain isles never before discovered. Although John Davis may actually have sighted Tierra del Fuego. Furthermore, the islands may have been visited by the native peoples of Tierra del Fuego in prehistoric times, who themselves became victims of genocide by the governments of Argentina and Chile in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The first recorded landing on the Falkland Islands took place on the 27th of January 1690 when the crew of the British ship Welfare under Captain John Strong landed. Or maybe I should say English ship because uh, the act of union between England and Scotland was uh, yet to come. The islands were then named after the then treasurer of the Royal Navy, Viscount Falkland, and the channel between the two largest islands was called the Falkland Sound. In the early 18th century, the islands were visited most frequently by French sailors from the port of Saint-Malo in Brittany, from which came the name in French as Les Îles Malouine, Malouine being somebody from Saint Malo. The name was corrupted by the Spanish into Islas Malvinas, which I am unaware of in any other use in the Spanish language, but do accept that there is a first name Malvina, although that appears to come from the Scottish Gaelic term for smooth brow. 
After the Seven Years' War with France from 1756 to 1763, the British Admiralty dispatched Commodore John Byron, who was to be the grandfather of Lord Byron, and he was sent there to discover islands and to found a settlement and naval base on the Falklands. On the 12th of January 1765, the Commodore took possession of the islands in the name of King George III and founded the settlement Port Egmont on Saunders Island. Before doing this, he made a 650 kilometer long circumnavigation of the islands and found no signs of habitation. The advantage of this port was that it was a useful potential stopover for ships sailing into the Pacific via the Cape. Indeed, in later years, the Falkland Islands were to be used for this aim. A year later, in 1766, British settlers learned that in 1764, Louis-Antoine de Bougainville had taken possession of East Falkland and established a settlement there in the name of King Louis XV of France, which clearly had been missed by Commodore John Byron. Spain did not know if the 15th century Pope had given them the islands or not, as they were unsure of where the demarcation line lay, but nevertheless made a claim. As the royal families were related and they didn't want to quarrel, France surrendered its claim in return for financial payment of the equivalent of very approximately £24,000, which was really a lot of money then, given that the islands were on the other side of the globe and had little value other than that as a potential stopover for ships going around Cape Horn. And this really was only a potential stopover, and I have to be very clear on this one. If you've seen the 1982 uh, Dino De Laurentiis film, The Bounty, you'll have seen the difficulties that Captain Bly had in going around Cape Horn. And indeed, he did only 85 miles in one month and he had to turn around. So, and that happened uh, quite a few years later. On the 4th of June, 1770, a Spanish frigate arrived in Port Egmont, followed by a fleet of five ships containing 1,400 Marines, and they ordered the settlers to leave. So they left. The Spanish ships, however, did not leave anyone behind, so the islands became once more uninhabited. The British government was most displeased when it learned what had happened. The Spanish government in Madrid disowned the action, which in any case had been ordered by the governor of Buenos Aires, which was then, of course, a part of Spain or a Spanish colony. And uh, the Madrid government returned the islands to notional British rule without prejudice. British settlers went back, but after three years, the settlement was closed due to the cost of maintaining it. However, whereas the islands were once more uninhabited, the settlers left behind a flag and a lead plaque recording that the islands were the property of King George III. As it happened, the islands were not uninhabited, as a small Spanish garrison was still at Puerto Soledad, and stayed there until the Spanish Empire in South America collapsed as a result of the French invasion of Spain in 1811. The few Spanish people then left for good with no indication that they would ever return. Meanwhile, the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata declared themselves independent in 1816 and here you can see the boundaries of the country at the time. Four years later the Buenos Aires government decided to establish a convict settlement on the islands. This was of course disputed by the United Kingdom. 
the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata hired a Hamburg-based business person, Louis Vernet, to establish a settlement and fisheries in 1826. Louis Vernet was of French Protestant origin and later claimed to be French when he sought the assistance of that country in a legal dispute. Before starting on his Falklands expedition, he got permission from the British authorities in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires named Verne military and civil commander of the islands in 1829, but he was recalled to Buenos Aires only two years later after he seized three United States ships in a dispute over fishing rights. In 1831, the captain of the USS Lexington destroyed the settlement in reprisal and deported some of the settlers, declaring the islands once again free of all government. At this point, the British government decided to assert its rights of sovereignty, which they had kept up all the time because of the importance of the islands in controlling the route around Cape Horn, which was no longer a theoretical route, but an actual route. The British government sent Captain J.J. J. Onslow on the frigate HMS Cleo. When he arrived at Solitude, Soledad, in January 1833, he found 50 Argentinians under the command of Captain J.M. Pinedo of the Argentinian schooner Sarandi and left them a note uh, telling them what his intentions were, requesting that they leave. No force was used. The garrison left peacefully and uh, most of them left two days later, although a handful did stay behind as settlers. Onslow raised the Union flag on shore at 9 o'clock on the 3rd of January 1833. Verne attempted to set up his business there once more, but when his deputy, Matthew Brisbane, announced that he would be unable to pay what was owed to his settlers, Eight of them killed Brisbane and four of his staff on the 26th of August, 1833. And that indeed might make the subject of a future video or may not. We'll see. In 1840, the Falklands became a crown colony and remained administered by the United Kingdom until the 2nd of April, 1982. In 1844, Port Stanley became where the government was located, if you can call the government when there's only a few handful of people uh, living there. Most settlers came from islands to the northwest of the United Kingdom and they brought sheep with them so that wool became the main export. Because of its location, the Falklands became known for ship repair and wrecking, although this uh, de dropped considerably with the introduction of steamships and later, and most importantly, by the opening of the Panama Canal, so it was no longer necessary to sail around the Horn. Argentina maintains its claim on the Falkland Islands based on the Treaty of Tordesillas of the 7th of June 1494. And now, because it is the 40th anniversary of the Falklands War, I'm going to do a uh, number of videos largely based on things I wrote on my Facebook page 10 years ago for the 30th anniversary and there'll be a link to that below somewhere and uh, I'm trying now to largely regurgitate what I did then. Obviously I'll have people saying I am biased because I am British or uh, words to that effect in the comment section. On the other hand, um, I will be most displeased at anybody uh, insulting Argentinians in the comment section, and indeed I will defend any Argentinians who find themselves being insulted by petty-minded British or not most probably English nationalists. And at the same uh, time, anybody writing things like Las Malvinas son Argentinas will also find themselves uh, insulted by me because they quite clearly are not. Having said all that, I hope you found the video interesting. I upload every Friday at 
8 my time 20 hundred hours central european time seven o'clock in the uk and all sorts of other times in other countries so if this is of interest to you then please subscribe but in the meantime thanks for listening